Hi there, this is Eric for Otoy. In this video, we're going to talk about working with the specular material in Octane for Maya. And for this video, I'm using the Octane underscore materials underscore 01 dot MA scene, which has our little sci-fi structure here, and then our spheres with a diffuse, glossy, specular, and metallic material applied. I'm going to select this sphere right here, which has a specular material applied, and just move it up a little bit. Maybe scale it so it's a little bit more obvious. And as we look at the um, sort of sci-fi bar structure here through the sphere, we can see that the sphere, the specular material that is applied to the sphere, is transparent. So the specular material is perfect for things like uh, transparent liquids, glass, um, in some cases very shiny metals as well anything that requires physically based transparency. So taking a look at the specular material attributes here in the attribute editor, you'll notice uh, it does not have a diffuse channel at all. Um, at the very top, we have the reflection settings. So I'll increase the reflection settings. You can see that the reflection gets a bit stronger. And we could also put a texture in here using the slot. Uh, we have, below this, we have transmission, which controls the uh, amount or I should say the color of the transparency. So if I set this all the way to one, the color is white, meaning that this is 100% transparent. If I uh, go down to this tr transmission slot and create a node, let's say RGB spectrum texture, and I'll set this to like uh, orange or red, you can see that now the transmission is picking up that color. try different various different colors here so it's perfect for colored glass and of course you could use a colored texture as well if you're going to do like stained glass or something like that or something a bit more intricate than just a flat color let's break that connection and let's leave this all the way at one so it's 100 percent transparent um, when you're working with transparent surfaces uh, you want to pay attention to the kernel that you're using I'm currently using the direct light kernel, which works pretty well, but I'm going to go to the Octane Render tab and uh, next to kernel, click on this arrow to open up the settings in the attribute editor and let's set this to path trace. So you can see we do get a, a difference between direct light and path trace with our um, specular material. And then if we go down here to roughness, as I start to increase the roughness, we're making the surface less smooth, obviously more rough, which is causing both the reflections and the refractions to become blurred. So increasing the roughness is a great way to simulate things like frosted glass. If I bring this all the way up, we get something that looks like this. And as I lower it, you can see through more of it. And then all the way down here, we come back to this. You also notice that a value above zero will start to get a specular highlight. So if I set this all the way down to zero, we don't really get a reflection of the light source. We just see the transparency through the surface. So you probably want to have a little bit of roughness in there uh, just so you can get a little bit of that highlight. So 0 0.001 is pretty low. You can see the refraction is somewhat blurred, but we do see the reflection of the sunlight right there. So the anisotropy settings work the same way that they do with the glossy material. So let's set the roughness to 0 0.05 so you can see more of that highlight. And then I'll increase the anisotropy. Uh, if we're not seeing a difference, remember I have the shelf button here to kind of force a refresh for the pre-cache frames. So check out, if, you, if you're curious as to what this button does, check out the video on glossy materials. Um, it sort of explains that button. Um, Still not seeing much of a change. So let's switch the BRDF model to Beckman. Click on this. And now we should start to see, there we go. See the highlight right there. And then we can change the rotation and I'll increase the roughness to really spread it out. So you can see how anisotropy and roughness kind of work together 
to create the look. Try on GGX, this could be a little bit different. So that's anisotropy. Let's bring this back down to zero. And let's bring the roughness back down to, let's say 0.01. And take a look at the index of refraction. Again, uh, index of refraction is something that you can look up online if you want to find the correct index of refraction for various different materials. You can go to a website such as Pixel and Poly, and they have a nice list there. Any Google search for index of refraction should bring you to several websites with a list like this one. The index of refraction of light passing through a vacuum is 1, so that makes the surface almost completely invisible. If I bring out the roughness, though, you can start to see the edge there. And you get this kind of look. But you notice the index of refraction basically means that we have no specular highlight either. So if I bring this up to 1.1 and let's bring the uh, roughness down, you can see that it's around the edges of the surface, the uh, image is becoming distorted as we increase the index of refraction. So let's bring that up to 1.5 and let's set the roughness down to zero. Well, let's say 0.1. And so it looks like kind of a glass ball. And of course, in the roughness channel, you could always use a texture as well to break that up. Dispersion essentially uh, creates kind of a prism effect as light travels through the surface. It's breaking it up into its different wavelengths. So you start to see this kind of rainbow effect in the refraction. Uh, bump, normal, and displacement work the same way they do with the other materials. Keep in mind, if you add a bump to the surface, you're essentially adding a little bit of roughness to the surface, which is going to not only break up the specular highlight and create a bumpy surface, it's also going to affect the refractions similar to how increasing the roughness might. So if you have a roughness of zero, but you have a bump texture, you're going to get some of this kind of sort of uh, blurred refraction effect as well. So again, you could use roughness and bump or roughness and normal together to create a really realistic looking uh, surface. So down below, we have the opacity slider. As I bring this down to zero, the object disappears. If I bring it up, you can see it's fading back into the scene. It's not just the surface, also the specular highlights and reflections as well. So uh, as I mentioned in the video on glossy materials, the opacity slot here, you can use a grayscale texture to create kind of cutout effects. So if I click on this checker box here to bring up the create render node window, I'll click on octane checks texture. This creates a black and white checkerboard and you can see the result. On the black spaces on the checkerboard, we have 100% transparency and no reflections or anything like that. And on the white areas, we have 100% uh, opacity. So we have the transparent refracted surface here. So it looks kind of odd, but you can see how uh, a more useful texture could create kind of a cutout or gobo effect. Going back to the material, below opacity, we have the medium slot. I'm going to cover this in more depth in another uh, video, uh, but just uh, keep in mind that the medium is how you would create things like subsurface scattering using the specular material. So we'll talk about that more in a later video. So let's bring this down a little bit closer to the ground. So we take a look at how fake shadows work. Let's move this guy out of the way. Okay. So you can kind of see that we have this intersected with the ground and we can see the shadow right here. And currently the way the shadow is worked is it's being cast by the object. And um, we're getting this caustic light pattern down here that's starting to develop right here that represents a physically accurate transparency for an object that has this particular index of refraction. All right, so as I lower the index of refraction, let's say to 1.1, we're going to get more of a focused um, kind of caustic pattern right here. So this is the physically accurate way that light behaves as it passes through a surface like this. 
But if you need to save a little bit of time in terms of uh, render time, or you want to create something that looks more like architectural glass, you can turn on fake shadows, which does a real quick kind of transparent type of a shadow. So it's not as physically accurate as leaving this off, but it works great for doing things like architectural glass where you really want just the light to come through like a window or something like that. And of course, um, it will be affected by index of refraction, but it's not quite as dramatic as when you have realistic shadows on. So let's turn this back off and let's rotate to a view such as this one. You can see the whole object. And I'm going to go into Windows uh, Render Settings, Render View. And do a quick snapshot of perspective camera. And do an IPR render. Okay, so now we're in the Render View. We can see the Alpha channel more easily. Uh, so if I turn on the Alpha, this is what we currently get. So if we go into the render settings and go to the kernel and turn on alpha channel, now we see an alpha channel. But you can see the transparency is not represented correctly in the alpha channel. So if I select my uh, specular sphere again and go to the material settings and turn on effect alpha, now you get the physically correct refraction in the alpha channel as well as in the RGB channel. And then finally, uh, like the glossy material, we do also have a film on here. You can see a little bit of coloring on the edges there. Let's get to a more obvious view of the specular highlight and increase the roughness a little bit. That's too much. Something like that and we'll increase the index. And now you can see as I adjust the film width, we're getting that kind of look to it. So this is really good for creating something that looks like oily water um, by adding a little bit of that kind of slight rainbow kind of quality to the specular highlights. as well as the transmission. Let's set this to 1.5. And we can also play with the film index. You can see you get some really cool looking effects by playing with the film, as well as the transmission. So that's the basics of working with the specular material. In the next video, we'll take a look at the metallic material.